Good day everyone, this is Teacher Nori. In this video, we are going to learn about the effects of interactions among organisms. First, let us review some of the terms that we need to know. Ecosystem. It is an area where living things interact with their environment. Population. The number of organisms of the same species in an ecosystem. Species. The kind of organisms in an area. Niche. It is the role and position of a species in the environment. A species niche includes all of its interactions with the living and non-living things of its environment. This is the level of organization in an ecosystem. Producers can make their own food, like plants and algae. Primary consumers eat producers. They are herbivores, like carabao and butterfly. Secondary consumers eat primary consumers. They are carnivores. Tertiary consumers are also carnivores, and they eat secondary consumers. Carnivores in an ecosystem can change their niche depending on what organisms or what animals they eat. While omnivores can either be a primary consumer, a secondary consumer, or a tertiary consumer. Again, depending on what organism they eat. And the last one is the decomposers. These are organisms that break down dead or decaying matter. Examples of the, these are fungi and worm. Interdependence. All organisms in an ecosystem depend upon each other. The rise and fall of the population can affect the rest of the organisms. This interdependence can be illustrated using a food chain. A food chain is the sequence of transfer of matter and energy in the form of food from one organism to the next. If we intertwine different food chains in an ecosystem, we will form a food web. The introduction of new plants or animals through human intervention in an ecosystem can also have irreversible effects. Example of this is the introduction of the janitor fish in the Pasig River ecosystem. Initially, it was done to, to eliminate the sludge forming at the bottom of the river. But since the janitor fish multiplied um, in a faster pace than the natural or original uh, animals in the ecosystem, then they took over some of the tasks or the niche of the other animals and replace them, which altered the organization of the food chain in the ecosystem. The nutrients in the soil can determine the kind of plants that can grow on it, and the kind of plants in an area can help determine the kind of animals that can live there. This is an example of a food web found in an estuary. And these are examples of food chains from the food web given. This is an example of a food web in a forest. And these are some of the food chains found in the given food web. Competition. All plants and algae that perform photosynthesis in an ecosystem compete for light, space, water, and mineral from the soil. Animals in an ecosystem compete for food, mates, and their territory. Organisms that receive more of these resources tend to grow more healthy and are more likely to have offspring. Competition can be interspecific or between different organisms of different species, or it can be intraspecific, where the competition happens between organisms of the same species. Stable Communities According to Adaptations, Interdependence, and Competition article by bbc.co.uk, a stable community is one in which the size of the population of all species remain almost constant over time. If we consider the sample food chain, stonefly larva is eaten by a small fish, and the small fish is eaten by a heron. The small fish helps control the population of the stonefly larva, while the heron helps control the population of the small fish. 
If the stonefly larva population decrease, so will the number of small fish and heron. If the population of the small fish increase, it may lead to the decrease or extinction of the stonefly larva population in that area and an increase in the number of the heron. Abiotic factors the presence of different organisms in an ecosystem and its distribution is affected by abiotic factors. These include light intensity, which is the amount of light the organism is adapted to receive. For example, an orchid can survive with minimum amount of light. So if you place it in an area of your house or where it can get direct sunlight, it might not grow well while a cactus that is adapted to get much light will wither if we place it in, an, in a dark area. Temperature. Both plants and animals have evolved to live at certain range of temperature. For example, a polar bear will not be able to survive in warmer temperature, as well as some trees that cannot grow well in winter. Moisture level refers to the wetness or humidity in an area. For example, a picture plant will not grow well if it grows if you let it grow in an area that is relatively dry. Soil acidity. Some plants are adapted to grow well in acidic soil. Some grows well in alkaline soil, while some can grow on both. An example of plant of a plant that can grow on both acidic and alkaline soil is the hydrangea. The color of the flower of a hydrangea plant can indicate if the soil it is planted on is acidic or alkaline. Water acidity. Aquatic animals have also adapted to certain levels of acidity in water. For example, a frog will survive in an acidic environment better than a salamander. Soil mineral content. Many plants require high levels of minerals to grow well, while some have evolved to catch insects to supplement the low levels of minerals in the soil where they grow. Wind intensity and direction. Many organisms prefer more sheltered locations. That is why they will they tend to survive better inside a forest than on its edges. Carbon dioxide levels for plants. High levels of this gas can make plants grow healthier. And that is one of the reasons why we release carbon dioxide to plants that we grow in a farm. Oxygen levels for aquatic animals. Healthy lakes and rivers have high levels of dissolved oxygen. In this case, we can see or we can look for bioindicators to check for water pollution. For example, clean waters will have stonefly nymphs or mayfly larvae, while uh, slightly polluted waters will have freshwater shrimp and caddis fly larvae. A moderately polluted uh, water environment will have blood worm and water louse. A high level or a, a water and uh, water environment with the high levels of pollution will have sludge worm and red tailed maggot. While a very high highly polluted water will have no living insects in it. And that is the end of our video. Thank you for watching. Until next time.